This is the Jeff Orovitz Show on 97.1 The Big Talker. All right, Rob Wilson joins us today. I want to also talk about a bill protecting religious freedoms and a mayoral candidate drops out of the Flagstaff election. The Jeff Orvitz Show starts now. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for listening. Jeff Orvitz here. Happy to be here with you today, Wednesday. What is it, April 27th, Rob? Rob it Wilson. is already. Jeez. How'd that happen, huh? Month's almost over. It's been a heck of a seven days for you. It has and a been, lot of people. Yeah, the uh, the last week out in the Timberline area has been an adventure for everybody, and it's had some really tragic consequences for a lot of folks. That, yeah, uh, I'd like to talk a lot about a little bit later. Yeah, I want you to share your story, and because it doesn't matter where you're listening to us from in northern Arizona, I know the Crooks Fire has grown in uh, Prescott area to yep. over eight thousand acres. No matter where you are in northern Arizona, and really Arizona in general, but especially. Uh, north of the Great Wall there, but even south, I mean, Bisbee. Yep. Uh, outside Bisbee there, that's, that thing is out of control. So, oh, man, I can't believe it's not even May, Rob. And, and, and we're dealing with half this. of New Mexico is on fire. Right yeah, that one, it? like two fires merged or something yep, over there. Exactly. I just hope, is there any, any, any rain in the forecast? Anything? Not I mean, that I've seen. I mean, you know, May, May is one of the, May and June are just. Yeah, I keep seeing dry. more fire weather forecasts. Ugh. Okay, so we'll get into details. And we've got the lines open. As you know, Olivia took the week off. She had some accrued vacation you time. gave her a week off? <laughs> yeah. She's like on this whole school trip. They take the whole school. She goes to Fly Christian. They take the whole, most of the school. And every year they go somewhere else for a week. And she's doing cool. that. And they, they don't even give them phone. Like, you're not allowed to use the phones. And we just get, like, some messages. Like, they're all still, you know, with Alive, us. Alive, yeah. yeah. They didn't, because they were out of water park at one point. You're always like, oh, man. <laughs> You know, you know, dumb kids can get so, uh, so we, but we do have lines open. The just wireless listener line is open and Rob and I will try to pop in some of your calls. So we will take them. Uh, maybe we may be a little clunky, but yeah. we, we shall, we shall endeavor here, uh, to try to get you on air. Uh, give us a call 877-9713-971. Uh, and just wireless. Thank you for sponsoring our listener line. They've got two locations in Flagstaff where you can get your smartphone repaired, your tablet, your gaming console right across from the Flagstaff mall. And then also um, in West Flagstaff on, on Milton Avenue there by the Coldstone Creamery. And time's running out. If you bring in a um, non-perishable item, canned food, you get 10% off hey. uh, this month. So that's ending, God, quickly. That's so, a good deal. Yeah, check out Just Wireless. Save your money. And you, Rob and I have something on the supply chain issues, too, and the containers that are sitting there and something from the World Bank, which as much as we can trust them, right, as far as um, how it's getting worse. Oh, sure. supply chain issues. So you, you probably want to keep old things going. Yep. Um, in, in this day and age. So anyway, uh, we'd love to hear from you. 877-9713-971. Rob, I, I want to start with this one. Um, Representative Ben Toma, who's the majority leader, who I've always enjoyed having on the show. I think he does some good work down at the state legislature. Mm-hmm. He came up with a bill to protect religious freedom in Arizona and it was signed into law by the governor. And, and let me just read this real quick and then get your take. Sure. Uh, this is from the Arizona Daily Independent. Uh, Monday, Governor Ducey signed a bill sponsored by Representative Ben Toma that protects the fundamental right of Arizonans to exercise their religious religion freely. Okay, I, I thought we already had that. I would hope that we already had <laughs> I that. I thought we had a constitutional Pretty right. important part of the Constitution. Yeah. <sighs> the bill HB 2507 protects religious organizations from discrimination and allowed them to operate on the same terms as other wait for it, essential businesses during times of crisis or emergency. Why? Why Why do we even need this so thing? So, again, we're picking and choosing what yeah. is and is not essential, and, and who gets to decide that? It's so frustrating because I here's my take on this, Rob. All businesses are essential, especially Absolutely. if it's your business. You're like, yeah, my business is essential. And, and your employees. And your employees, it, your family. To, yes. Yeah. And here okay, – and, and, and I'm not knocking – um, Representative Toma, because I know why he, I've talked to him about this. I know why he had to do this. Yep. And I'm glad Governor Ducey signed it, but Governor Ducey is one that decided during the- To shut him down to in the shut first them place. Down. Yes. Yeah. And so where's the apology? I don't see it. So what this does is it, is it, it it's, it, the law says that you can't take any discriminatory action against a religious organization on the basis that the organization is religious, operates, or seeks to operate during a state of emergency or engages in the exercise of religion. The bill also declares a religious service as an essential service during a state emergency, which I read this, Rob, and I'm like, 
Are we planning another state emergency? Doesn't it sound like that? Yeah. And and why aren't we instead passing laws that limit the powers of the declaration of the state of emergency in the first place? Because then we wouldn't need laws like this one here. So fresh. They tried. Um, I believe it was Senator Michelle Eugenie Rita. I had her on right. the program. Yep. She she tried to get it passed. It was one. I was just looking back on some old news feeds earlier today. One month ago, Ducey finally let or got rid of his state of emergency. Just one month ago, it was two and a half years. Yeah, that's how long it went into effect. So it's almost like they're they're preparing for like they're they're, they're the saying there will be another one the next time. Yeah. Yep. And it's the just, next time. And each time just, it happens, we get conditioned to accept it more and more, unless we're willing to stand up and say, "Hey, wait a minute. That's never what a state of emergency was supposed to be. It was supposed to be for a very short period of time until you can convene whatever legislative body you need to convene and pass laws to address a problem." Yeah. It's not to give one person uh, the Carte emperor's yeah. crown for crown yeah, for, for two and a half years or right. in some states more this is still going it's yeah. still happening yep um so she tried to pass that and it was something she wanted to limit the emergency like you had oh, off the top of my head it was either 30 or 60 days before it was a you, long time yeah before you had to go to the legislature i don't i don't want to limit the government's ability to do some things in super emergencies but i'm thinking like i own a shop i'll use downtown flagstaff for an example i own a shop and I'm right around the corner from the railroad tracks and a train derails and there's some kind of gas toxic gas. Out. Yeah. Okay. I, I can, I can live with common sense there and so say, the mayor has to shut down several blocks yeah, of downtown. Okay. Until they clean it up. But exactly. for how long should that be? Probably 24, 48 hours. You know, you wouldn't think two and a half years. Um, so the fact that we have this law is good news for, for people's religion and for people's right. religious rights, but it's bad news that we have to have this law. Isn't it? It's concerning. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You got one here. You shared with me from Chicago. <laughs> do, you, do you have that one pulled up? Or yeah, I, should I... I don't have it pulled up, but I, I <laughs> you, you have this one memorized here. Yeah. Uh, Chicago's giveaway. Mayor Lori Lightfoot, yeah. who coincidentally happens to be up for re-election. And she's been one of the tyrants. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, she just got uh, a law passed in her city that allows her to give away $12.5 million worth of free gas cards free. and free um, subway tokens. So if you're a friend of, of Lori Lightfoot, Mayor yeah. Lori Lightfoot, you'll get some, some free stuff. And the cards that they're giving, they're, they're like prepaid MasterCards. They actually have her name on them. So, <laughs> it's like the Lori Lightfoot she's up uh, for re-election. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That to me is electioneering. It's but she'll say no. It just says the office of the mayor. Some garbage. I haven't seen it, but I would imagine it actually has her name. It, on it. it just has her Lori name Lightfoot. on it. Yeah. Well, there's you know some other stuff, but yeah, it, yeah. yeah. The, the 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 mayor is helping you out, giving you twelve. You're getting free. Yeah, twelve and a half million dollars. And again, it goes back to the inflationary pressures. These people are trying to figure out ways to deal with inflation, but yet they're the ones causing the inflation by and large. Uh, and especially her, she's a Democrat, right? Yep. I mean, the Democrat Party has, 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 has put just gasoline on the fire here, and they're causing more and more inflation. And then you, put, you say, here's 12.5 million free bucks. That's really adding more to the inflationary pressures. Absolutely. And, and you know where she got that 12.5 million from? Probably. This is my guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all the billions and of dollars, uh, unspent dollars yet, of all the COVID aid mm-hmm. that was given to cities, there's still billions and billions of unspent dollars that the federal government has committed to that. My opinion is, if we haven't spent it yet, then apparently it isn't needed. Yeah, you know, unemployment is at record level, low levels. Everything has that can has reopened. Um, what? Why are we continuing to fund? these COVID relief programs so that a mayor can give twelve and a half million dollars in free gas cards out. Yeah. It They're just trying make- to find place. Well, uh, Ducey is not, um, his, his hands aren't clean in this one either. Last week I shared the story about this uh, $10,000 for, uh, to help businesses, small businesses to hire people. Right. Oh. Um, yeah, you might want to look into yeah, this. I was gonna say, not, huh? not only hire, but retain. Okay. Uh, and, and as a small business, you know, when, when you're dangled money, I get it. You're, and people in general, when, when the government says, here's a stimulus check and it all shows up, I've had some listeners call in and say, Hey, I'm going to give that to charity or whatever, but they're mm-hmm. either way they're spending it. They're, they're, they're putting right. it back into the economy. No, but what governor Ducey did, and it came from the cares money. Uh, I believe he recharged an existing program that came up, you know, a year or so ago, two years ago, uh, $15 million off the top of my head 
to, as a business, you can go apply for it up to $10,000 if you have a certain amount of employees. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was like f- between five and 20. It was some arbitrary number like that, mm-hmm. which I thought was weird because why not three? Why not four? You yeah. know, why not 21? I don't know where they come up with this stuff, Rob. How does that make a difference? Yeah. Yeah. So he, you're, but in his press release, he said Arizona's economy is doing so good, at, but inflation is such a problem. Here's ten thousand dollars, basically, which which made no sense because if the economy is doing so good, why do you need to hand out why money you artificially? Yeah, and if inflation's a problem, do you really want to inject more money into free the problem? Money. Yeah, yeah, quote unquote, uh, free money. Uh, b- by the way, before we get too far here, Rob, um, and I do want to get into your your story about the fire because uh, as I've been telling everybody since last week, you were uh, in the fire zone, not only your personal residence, as was my yeah. my dad's and and many other people who are listening. Uh, for the um, the tunnel fire northeast of Flagstaff, but Timberline Firearms and Training was in there as well. But you didn't have any. I've been saying this all week. You didn't have any damage because I drove by. No damage to our store okay. or facility um, or our outdoor range. So we're very fortunate in that respect. But I was forced to be closed for a week. All of yeah. my employees were off for the week. Um, you know, we lost a, a week's worth of of, of business. So, you know, there, there's some things that we're trying to recover from there, too. Well, do you, this goes right along. And that's why I asked this, because we're talking about this um, religious uh, protecting religious freedom bill that was signed into law in Arizona. Mm-hmm. And they talk about essential businesses. Do you think that if this fire had happened like before COVID, that it would have been closed as long? Or do you think it's a new trend to just let's keep the people out longer? Let's keep things closed. I fear that's exactly what it is, Jeff. I think that our elected officials, our elected representatives um, have decided to always err on the side of extreme caution now. We're no longer being treated as adults that can make our own decisions. Um, You know, every moment that you're awake of every day as an adult, you are making decisions about what levels of risk you're going to accept. Mm -hmm. Every time you place one foot in front of the next. Yeah. So, we ought to be able to be treated like adults who can make good decisions. Um, I think in the tunnel fire, the evacuation area was larger than it needed to be. I think it lasted longer than it needed to last. And I think it was driven in large part because the folks that make the decisions were being hyper cautious. Um, it, it, we need to, but are we in a world nowadays where, and I, and I agree with you a hundred percent, but let me play devil's advocate here. Sure. Everybody's, Three seconds away from suing, everybody. No, I shouldn't say everybody. There's a large segment of the population that's three seconds away from suing, right? Large for any enough. little thing, large yep. enough. There's a large segment of the population that now expects the government to protect them from in, everything, from everything, including their own stupidity, including their own stupidity. And then there's people like I'll just say it, like probably a lot of people listening right now, you, myself, my dad, mm-hmm. who are like, you know what? Okay, the fire's gone through. I need to get to my property, mm-hmm. and I'm willing to take the risk. Uh, I'm going to go protect my property. And there's a lot of people listening that that's what they want to do. But again, I, I, I'll say what I said with Bruce Sidlinger yesterday. I think we're a rounding error. <laughs> I think there's less and less of us. But shouldn't we have that right to just, I get it. I waive my right for you to protect me, and thanks. Right. And be able to do, do what I need to do on my property. Yeah, maybe we need to have a common sense test. And if you can pass this common sense test, you get a special <laughs> card because that says, okay, you can go past this, this checkpoint, but again, you don't have be, enough common sense. There might go- be too few people on that <laughs> well, <list>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I agree with you completely that we as, as individuals have rights with respect to our personal um, travels or you know, where we go, what we do, and, and protecting our own um properties. And I know that when I got back on Tuesday, um, earlier in the evening mm-hmm. to my place, um, I, if I hadn't been there to put out fences that were burning yeah. um, towards my house, I think my house would probably be gone. Yeah. Um, the fire department was severely overtaxed at that mm-hmm. point. They didn't have people to drive around, and do that kind of stuff. So there, I'm sure that there are, as a result of people who went back, there was less, less property fires. loss than there would have been otherwise. Let's do this. I want to. I want to touch on that because I have a similar story to share with, from my dad mm-hmm. that, that you're talking about. But I, I, let's do this when we come back. Let's kind of rewind it a little bit and talk about this fire, the the uh, tunnel fire, ha- how it started. You've got a bunch of details and facts, mm-hmm. and then kind of work through all that. And then I want you to share your experience because you were there Tuesday night. Yep. And according to the quote unquote authorities, probably weren't supposed to be. 
<laughs> I was in the mandatory evacuation zone. Yes. Okay, all right. We, we'll spill spill guilty. the spill I'm, the beans here, but I know other people that have that did that as well. So I want you to share kind of that whole experience sure. uh, for us when we come back. And if you got a comment, folks, love to hear from you. Just wireless listener line eight seven seven ninety seven one three ninety seven one. You can also send an email. We'll be keeping an eye on that. Talk with Jeff at iCloud dot com. Uh, speaking of of homes. Um, I want you to give my friend Kim Dawson at Nova Home Loans a call if you're looking to refinance a home uh, or if you're looking to buy a new home. Uh, she has a lot of great programs, and she she finds the programs that work specifically for you. And since Nova's both a bank and a broker, she has the flexibility to shop for the best rates and terms. I know because I'm a customer of Kim Dawson and Nova Home Loans myself. Uh, Kim will even waive the lender fees on all VA loans. So whether you're buying or whether you're um, looking to refinance, she can definitely help you out. Give her a call, 928-310-6458. That's 928-310-6458, 928-310-6458. Nova Home Loans, NMLS 3087. Terms and conditions may apply. BK number 0902-429 in equal housing opportunity. All right, back with Rob Wilson. Hang tight. All right, welcome back here with uh, Rob Wilson of Timberline Firearms and Training. Your gutter's really on fire. I, I know we keep saying we're going to tell the whole story from, like, go back, but <laughs> I, I've already mentioned this to listeners. Your gutter's caught on fire. Yeah, absolutely. Not the metal, but the, the crap in there. Yeah, the, the, the uh, pine needles that were in the gutter yeah. caught on fire and scorched mm-hmm. the side of the house. That's um, crazy. Yeah. I just thought of it because our sponsor's gutter helmet, and uh, you don't think about the, even that kind of stuff. Um well, that was like, something I hadn't thought about at all. Yeah. I know I have to go up there and clean them every year, year yeah. or every six months. Not like now. Really. Well, not, they're all cleaned out right <laughs> yeah. now for sure. But um, the, the pine needles drop here like in the next um, oh, next four so to six drop weeks. all the time? They drop all the time, yeah. but they have a mass <laughs> dropping in the, yeah. in the spring and then a mass dropping in the fall for some reason. We yeah. get it twice. I don't know why. And, you know, I thought about cleaning them out primarily so that the gutters flow properly. Yeah. And they yeah. take the water yeah. away from the house. I hadn't really anticipated the fact that they could catch on fire and then that could never potentially about torture that. your house. Yeah, never thought about that. Anyway, um, it's not something that Carl at, at Gutter Helmet of Northern Arizona ever said as a like a talking point. I, I'm, I'm going to give him a call and, and talk about it because I never thought about it. Yeah. Uh, but they have a, a, a reverse curve and it deflects all the pine needles and debris and it, it, they have a lifetime warranty and Gutter Helmet has the lifetime warranty and over 40 years of experience. So you don't want to clean those gutters. Um, and you don't want that stuff to accumulate in there and potentially cause a, a fire hazard and other hazards. Ice damming. Remember uh, Christmas vacation when he's hanging from the gutter and the ice shoots out? Yeah. I don't know if that can really happen, but <laughs> it, why not? Anyway, uh, give Carl uh, from Gutter Helmet of Northern Arizona a call or a text right now. Uh, mention the Jeff Orvitt Show. You can save up to 30%. Here's the number, 928-318-6555. That's 928-318-6555, or you can go to gutterhelmetsnaz.com. Okay, let's. Um, here's what I want to do, Rob. I, I, we've got a bunch of news items, but let's push them off to – a little bit later in the show, maybe the second hour, including some mayoral issues in the city right. of Flagstaff, um, Brand some new. world issues when it comes to the World Bank and inflation. We've got a bunch of things to hit on. But let's talk, Rob, about what happened. It started last Sunday with this fire. Uh, and, and I had a picture from Bruce Sindlinger. He flew over the fire about 545 and reported it to the tower. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that was the actual start of it. Like you said, like 430. Go, give, give me the history. Run through it. So Sunday at 422 p.m., was the first call that they officially received saying, hey, there's smoke up there um, a little southeast of, or southwest of the end of Campbell. Um, the Forest Service sent a crew out to investigate, and by about 8 o'clock, 8.30 that evening, um, they had named the fire, called it the tunnel fire, and they had said that um, it was out, that there was no smoke, no flames, the fire was out. Same day, Sunday. Sunday, Not yes. this past Sunday, but the... A week ago. A yeah, week, the, a week ago. Um, okay. Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday, okay. So I guess it's standard practice the next morning. Um, they sent a crew out just to double check to make sure the fire was out. And surprise, it was not. It was burning again. And um, so they had that crew 
I don't know how many people all together, but they worked the, the, that fire again most of that day, got it again to the point where they thought it was out. They said, you know, no smoke, no fire, no visible anything. So they considered it out. Sorry, that was Monday? That was on Monday. So. Okay, and the very next day. Yep. Okay. Tuesday morning, um, I've got some photographs from some folks that live in Dony Park. Um, at 6.14 in the morning, there was already smoke showing. Um, the winds hadn't picked up yet. Um, but the reports were coming in that, hey, that fire is going again. And the thing that had most everyone so concerned is that we knew Tuesday was going to be one of those days out in Dony Park where we get those 50 mile an hour, just blow you off your feet kind of winds. And we know those days. We know springtime they happen in Flagstaff every and year. especially Dony Park. Yeah, they happen yeah. every year. We know it's the winds always from the southwest going to the northeast. It, it, it funnels right through that kind of the Schultz Pass area, right? Yeah. Yeah, it just the, the zips gap, through there. The gap, the gap yeah, between Eldon right there. and yeah. Humphreys. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that morning it was reported. They sent another crew out. Um, that crew tried to get the fire out, but as the winds were picking up, apparently they lost control of it three times um, and then got it back, You know, got a, got a line ahead of it again. The fourth time they didn't. And uh, that was sometime around 9, 930, I guess, in the morning. And that's when the fire really started to take off. And there was... I think the majority of the air assets in, that might have otherwise been available were over in New Mexico helping to fight those fires. Mm-hmm. There was a single air tanker that dropped one load um, that morning around 11 o'clock or so. And but then ap- they couldn't operate much longer, I, I No, then think, they, they the got grounded dangers. because the winds okay. got so so strong. And I think it's a combination of, you know, there's there's wind coming off the mountain and, and the, the swirling and, and, you know, effects that that has. Yeah. Um, the other thing with 50 mile an hour winds, even if you're lined up perfectly over where you want to drop that, that slurry, it's going to blow and disperse so much in 50 mile an hour winds. It's really not doing anything. Yeah. So there isn't any value in it. Okay. So that's Monday. I'm sorry, Tuesday, which is kind of, it's, that's interesting because I was, um, my dad and I were in, in the city, in, look, I call it the city in Flagstaff, right? Uh, we were working on a project and I think it was around 11, 1130, um, my stepmom came into town too. She showed up at the, at the job site. Right. Mm-hmm. And we were, there was no mention of it. We weren't even, we didn't even talk. There was no mention of other. Oh, did you hear about a fire? Right. Is there anything going on? It's 11, 1130 or so. And then I actually left, uh, had to head out. And then like, when did those warnings go out? Um, Noonish? No, shortly after 11. Um, was it short? And, yeah. Okay. So maybe my timing's a little messed up, but it was like, there was no mention when I saw them and they lived there. And did you have any inkling of this going on either? Well, we got a new dog and I have to hike him every day or we don't sleep at night. Okay. So I, that morning I had hiked out to the power line um, behind the, the, that area. Okay. I was able to look up the Schultz burn scar and see the tunnel fire. And the smoke was almost horizontal, which is bad because that shows the wind is really blowing it. Okay. Um, I was concerned at the time, but it appeared that it was coming into that burn scar. So my thought was, well, it's already burned. So even if it does come into this burn scar, it's not going to really take off because there's, there's not nothing the there. fuel there okay. that there would have been. Unfortunately, the wind shifted just enough that that's not what happened. And it caught that grass. Well, well they caught trees too. It, I mean, yeah, yeah obviously, it was in the trees pretty much from the beginning. Um, what was it? Okay. Yeah. And, I guess I'm using, basing off where my, my dad's at, which is a little more open out there and there's some trees, but they're further apart yeah. and it just ripped through all those grasses. Like, yeah. Like, like it was crazy. a crown fire. I mean, it was burning okay. everything. There, are, there are trees that are completely, um, you know, there's not a branch left on them. It, okay, it burns so hot. So where are we at? You're, you're Tuesday, and where are you? Well, we're I'm working at Timberline Fire. Okay, which you know, we have customers in the which store, which is near your home. And everybody's obviously. everybody's phones start blowing up with these ready set go notices, and I think all three of them occurred in less than an hour. And you know, the first one I got, I thought, well, you know, it's not a big deal. I saw the fire earlier when I was hiking. Um, it looked like it was going to a burn scar, and as long as it stays going north, we're good. Um, the second one made me think a little bit more, and I, I've got a camera on a light pole that I aimed over that way. Actually, caught that first airplane drop, um, and then I started to get concerned, and then and then it was go, and it ready, was amazing. Ready, set, go. Yeah. Um, and it was amazing because all of a sudden 89 was nonstop traffic. There was, uh, people from all over the place showing up with horse trailers and things like that, because at that point then the smoke had gotten so large that everybody knew we had a real serious problem. Yeah. Okay. So that's like, and I think I'd share if Jim Driscoll on last Wednesday, day after mm-hmm. this really blew up. Um, and he said, it, I think he said 22 minutes, they went ready, set, go, which is highly unusual because I I've been in, um, 
the set stage mm-hmm. uh, multiple times in, in Flagstaff at my house. And um, sometimes for days. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> usually it's like, hey, be ready. And you're like, okay, I'll be ready. There's a fire 10 miles away, right? Oh, yeah. And then it's okay, you might want to be set. It's kind of shifted, but it's still off in the distance. I've never seen something that fast. It was, it was unreal. And that's one of the important things to take away from this fire, I think. And uh, I've talked with a number of folks that have experience with fires. This fire didn't behave the way fires in the past have. And I, I fear that our Forest Service experts are still trying to fight fires the way we fought fires of 20 or 30 or 40 years ago. The behavior is completely different now, and we need to completely change our strategy on how we fight these fires if we're not going to see more events like we did at the Tunnel Fire with all this loss. I have had multiple calls and people email me um, really frustrated with the Sunday, Monday timeline. Um, I saw the picture that Bruce provided mm-hmm. of the, the aerial shot where it was just, it looked like a half acre to me. It didn't look very big right. Sunday. It looked like in this area, you could have taken, you could have, you could have grabbed a water truck, filled it up and doused the whole thing pretty quickly. Because you can drive, and you've hiked back there. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a fairly flat area. You can get in there with a fairly decent clearance vehicle or, or less. Well, yeah, the fire crews were there. Yeah, it's, not, there. it's, not, it's not off the side of a cliff. They were there Sunday, they were there Monday, and then they were back again on Tuesday. So. Yeah, so have you had any indication as to, and I, I want there to be a full investigation. We'll get into more details here, but why wasn't it just doused? Is it the old practices that you're talking about that kind of let it go? That's my fear. I, and, and what we need to do is find the answers to that and a number of other questions. And, um, you know, at the Sanawa public meeting they had on Saturday, the Forest Service representative said, well, don't worry, we're going to have an independent investigation. Mm. And, and he left it at that and moved right on. Um, Nobody has asked, what do you mean by independent? Is it independent of the National Forest Service? Or is it independent of the firefighters that were on the scene? Um, And whoever is doing that investigation, in my opinion, needs to include a couple of members of the Dony Park community, the folks that were affected by that fire. Because I don't know about you, but I've lost faith and confidence in an awful lot of (laughs) entities and organizations over the last decade or so. Um, And... I would like to see, you know, some people that the community knows and respects beyond these committees and be able to say, yes, there was a thorough investigation. Here is what went right. Here's what went wrong. But more importantly, here's why that happened and how we're going to make sure it doesn't happen again. I've lost so much faith. I I mean, let's just look back the past two and a half years with COVID. Mm -hmm. And I look at something like the CDC, Rob. Yeah. And I look at somebody like Fauci who controlled so much of this country and, and the world really through whatever he said and his whims and, and wishes. And by the way, today he announced that it's a, it's not a pandemic anymore. Yeah. Apparently he's yeah. decided to retire. So is, is that what it is? I, I, he's, that's that's my opinion. Well, he's not getting the media attention. Decided, yeah. He yeah. must. That's a, that's a speculation. Decided, okay, it's time I'm to done. Retire. Yeah. Well, pandemic's over. Yeah. <laughs> so that way he can go travel freely. Yeah. And there you go. <laughs> that's just uh, speculation. Now he's the hero. But, but I've lost so much faith in our institutions and i don't want to be in that position no i want to trust that the cdc tells me that the zombie apocalypse violet virus is out there and i better take proper precautions right i want to trust that the national forest says oh no problem they're on it it's sunday it's monday and and maybe they were we don't you know there still has to be an investigation i I don't want to but I just look, I, I, when, when Bruce showed me back to his aerial shot yesterday, and see how small that thing was Sunday. Mm-hmm. And then you're saying they were on it. They had it under control Sunday, Monday. Mm-hmm. And basically it's good. And they're watching it. Did someone leave? Oh, they Did, left both nights. Okay. Well, what? Okay. Well, let me ask you this. You know, let's do this because here's my, here's my question. Why aren't we utilizing the community to, why would we leave a fire? And Mark Howitt was on Monday, and we were like, the National Forest, and they got the, the big bear, the smoky bear, whatever, mm-hmm. right? They're telling me, I got to bring in, you know, a water truck practically when I start a little campfire, yep. which is fine. And I got to dump a bunch of water. I got to swirl. I got to dump. I got to swirl, and then cool to the touch, right? Yep. Actually physically touch. Yes. Yep. And don't leave it until it's in that position. Why are they any different? Shouldn't have been. Why are they any different? And Because if they had done that on Sunday or Monday, then Tuesday wouldn't have happened. Yeah, and if... Uh, have you confirmed that they left? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's just out there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Why? That's what I want to well, hear from the, the National Forest Service. That's, Why? Th- they left because there was no smoke, there was no fire. So, Was it cool to the touch? I mean, there must have been something there. Yeah. yeah. Did, okay. And then I can say, okay, we're all human. Did someone just make a mistake? And it, it, it appeared to be out. You know, 
I think it might be deeper than that. And, okay. And that's why I want a really thorough investigation. I think it might be something like current philosophy that is taught to them or current forest service, forest service policy is once there's no smoke, no fire, you leave. You just leave. Yeah. But that's not what they're telling us. If that is the, if that's the case, Rob, that's not the standard we live under. No. And fire is no different. It doesn't care if it's me there swirling the thing and it's cool to the touch of them. Right. It just, it's just insane. Okay. I, I want to come back, though, and talk about the little, uh, more details from you. And we're with Rob Wilson. But also get into how in this country we, 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 the, we expect the government to take care of everything or a large segment of the population. Well, there's certain we, things we ex- – I yeah. think all of us expect the government to take care of certain things. Certain things. And, and they seem to be failing at – those core things right now. Fires, borders, wars. Yeah. Uh, I mean, There's that's just name, right name there. a few yeah. there. Okay. We'll continue this on. And if you want to chime in, we'd love to hear from you. 877-973-971. Hey, I want you to visit sunstatetech.com today and um, take advantage of their free, no obligation technology risk assessment. You know, we're living in a global economy and we all need the tools that connect us to the entire world. And since 2007, Sun State Tech has been helping Arizona businesses and municipalities operate quickly and safely. They handle cybersecurity, which is a huge issue nowadays, managed IT services, voice over IP, and more. Go right now to sunstatetech.com. Make sure your, your, your company or if your government organization, make sure that your systems are safe and secure. They'll take care of that right there and uh, give you an evaluation. Go to sunstatetech.com right now. All right, we'll come back with Rob Wilson. Wilson, get more into this. Plus, I got news items coming up. Hang tight. Back in a few. Protect yourself against wealth destruction with uh, precious metals. I want you to call Desert Gold Exchange and learn about precious metals. Look, I've, I've always had a little bit of gold and silver. Um, I don't give financial advice, but uh, I can tell you I have a little bit. And Rob Wilson's here with me. Um, yep. I, I need to ask you about safes and stuff, actually. I've got a really interesting yeah, old now, story about safes okay, coming up. Okay, now, now that I'm thinking about it, because you usually have this physical uh, in your physical possession, right? right? And you think about a fire, and you have some gold and silver. What do you, what do? You do? So mm-hmm. a- anyway, Desert Gold Exchange. I don't know if they have info on safes. Maybe they will, but Rob, <laughs> Rob at Timberline will. Yep. Um, call Justin and his family at Desert Gold Exchange. Uh, you get a no-pressure quote. And mention a Jeff Orch so you can get a free investor's kit. Um, 888-852-4343. 888-852-4343. By the way, if you order gold or silver, you can usually get it delivered in about 72 hours. And you can also ask them about IRAs. You can actually hold this stuff in your own IRA. Give Desert Gold Exchange a call, 888-852-4343. We will get to more news items, but I find this whole, what happened with, and we're here with Rob Wilson, if you're just joining us, he shared us shared with us kind of the the timeline, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, with the, with the fire and how quickly it went. So yep. then you got back in there um, you got back in there Tuesday evening after the flat fire really blew through, but there was a bunch of spot fire, a bunch of uh, remnants. Oh, it was more than spot fires. It okay. was, the forest was still on fire. Okay. Um, but in our yard, there were, you know, smaller trees and things like that that were still burning. Um, our fences. Uh, oh, don't, one my the, dad's probably listening. Don't talk about fences. One of the things I learned is, is that um, having wooden fences that go up as far as to your house is a really bad idea because in a fire, they're nothing more than a wick going into your home yeah. because the fire will catch the fence on fire and then it's going to go right up to your house and potentially get it. So I was, I was up until two o'clock in the morning on Wednesday, um, putting out fires right in the immediate surrounding my house and then was taking one hour naps. I set my alarm for every hour oh my God. so I could get up and put more fires out cause they would rekindle, um, I feel bad. I think I called you early the next morning. (laughs) You're like, what? (laughs) Well, you know, at that point you go into kind of a different mindset, you know, from, from Tuesday when the fire started until Friday, I didn't realize it, but on Friday I finally relaxed for a minute. And, and then I realized that was the very first time I had, I didn't take my boots off for 48 hours. (laughs) Oh wow. It was just nonstop. Well, that, that's what's interesting about this and, and the society we live in is, okay, you decided to go back there and 
care for your property. Now, there's some people that may be listening and saying, Rob, what you did was irresponsible because what if they had to come in and rescue you? And that's the sheriff mentioned that. He goes, we don't want to come rescue you people. But you decided, hey, this is what I need to do for my property, for my family, and I'm I'm doing it. And and others did it as well. And why can't we accept that as as a society and say, okay, or even say, here, Rob, sign here. (laughs) Go in. We're not coming to get you. Well, you know, and, and when I went in, I, yeah, my first priority, of course, was my own home. Mm-hmm. I wanted to, to check on the status of that, make sure that it was, um, you know, as being protected as, as best it could be. But I was also helping out neighbors throughout the whole time. And probably neighbors um, that probably weren't even there. Right. A lot of them. Um, yeah. Neighbors who had evacuated and, and who had fires going in their yards or who had no idea what was going on with their home, those kinds of things. Um, and when I went back in, I went back in. Um, fully understanding that I was doing so at my own Mm -hmm. peril. Um, I didn't expect any kind of a rescue or anything else. I made sure that I knew what my exit plan was, no matter what happened after that. So, you know, if, if you have, you know, we were talking just a little minute ago, we, we have neighborhood watch program training things. Why don't we have a neighborhood fire program fire brigade, where, yeah. where you know you train people that hey if if there's a fire and we need some volunteers to go in and do some things or something um you have the basics of you know making sure there's an escape route making sure you can you know you're keeping an eye on what the fire might be doing you know keeping uh, in communication with people so they know where you are and what's going on you know there's just really basic stuff it isn't super rocket science kind of thing and no you don't want hundreds and hundreds of people going in um, but a limited number of people who are acting responsibly and, and, and assisting in, you know, limiting property damage, I think makes a lot of sense. Well, and that goes back to what we we're talking about Sunday and Monday or any situation where the Forest Service thinks they have it under control. And maybe it's in a small area like this one was, mm-hmm. where to me, it, it looks like it was minimal acre, half acre, two acres, minimal to start, amount. right? Yeah. yeah, in the very beginning. Why don't we have volunteers that, hey, we need someone come. We're not going to leave these fires, but we don't have the resources to sit and watch everything, I guess, maybe, right. uh, because we're fighting something in New Mexico and Wyoming and wherever. Sure. Why not lean on the community? I don't understand why we've gotten away from this, the community, or the, the regular folks, Rob, you, me. Yeah. We, we're we not morons. We don't need to be protected at every instance from ourselves. Right. Can something go wrong? Yeah. But can I decide that for myself? Do you have to be a specially trained uh, forest service person to go sit there uh, with a hose or a rake on a fire that's uh, Sunday and Monday was, was nothing that they said was out. Yeah. Was nothing. And, and, and maybe they made a mistake and thought it was fully out, but I don't know. That's, that's, it doesn't seem that way. Or or even with exploded, even with technology, could they put up an infrared camera? Yeah. That came up yesterday. To a cell signal and and just monitor that area that they thought was out. Yeah. You know, it, it, that's not hard. That's super simple. And why not allow people? So the sheriff, uh, Sheriff Driscoll, who was on last week, they finally opened it up just last Sunday. So it was um, a week. Well, Tuesday to, to Sunday, right. Or Tuesday to Sunday, sorry. Yep. So Tuesday to Sunday, it was closed. And you're out there. Um, you put out multiple fires that had you not been there, who knows what would have happened. My dad did the same thing, a tree that was down that they had put out, recaught on fire. He went out there, put it out, mm-hmm. put out a fire in the neighborhood's yard yep. that you don't know what could have happened with that. Could have sparked a whole new set of fires. So, oh, okay. They were worried about electric lines and which utilities and this and that. Right. But you know what? Again, <laughs> yeah. what, where, where is the, 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 the faith and trust in, in, in the individual? Right. It's just gone. That, that you don't touch down power lines, you know? Um, yeah, that's that's a good. Th- this is insensitive, but you know, if if you're touching down power lines, maybe you shouldn't be. It's natural selection at that point. Well, <laughs> thank you for finishing that thought for me. I was reluctant to go that far. Well, but no, yes, I don't want anyone to get hurt. Right. Me I, I, I don't want anyone to get hurt, and, and I can understand some safeguards from uh, law enforcement that they put up the blocks. At, when I when I first went in there, I said, "Well, what are you what are you doing?" Because mm-hmm. I brought my dad back there. We're going to get, you know check on animals because one of the cats got out and we, we yep. got to get some medication for my grandpa, and and that was what we were doing. Although my dad jumped out and stayed out, but that's a whole nother. Sorry, you're busting yeah. dad, um, and that's what a lot of people did. But they asked the address right, and then I think more and more people were trying to get in to be looky loose, and there could be situations where people try to get in to whether it's a hurricane or tornado, whatever, and loot. I get it, but you can, then later they asked for IDs. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. You, you have your, this, this address, you live there. You okay. Can go. Yeah. Yeah. You, you would think there, there's got to be a better way to do that than, than how it happened. The other thing that, um, you know, 
resources were stretched thin. Um, the, the, Coconino County search and rescue teams and the cert teams were all yeah. fully activated and helping out as best they could. But I knew a lot of people from around my neighborhood that had evacuated as they were directed to do, but had no way of knowing what happened to their home. That was the really hard part. And it took several days yeah. for some well, of them to get any kind of information. Let me, can I, I'm going to share this, what, what happened between me and you. Yeah. If that's okay. Sure. Uh, as I'm asking you permission on air. Uh, I didn't know you had gotten in Tuesday night. Uh, we spoke earlier uh, Tuesday, uh-huh. and m- my dad tried to get back in there, and then he just couldn't get in. You you got lucky mm-hmm. and got in there. And Wednesday, I called you, and you, I was like, oh, I can't believe you're in there. They're just dying. They couldn't sleep all night because they it went right through. Yeah. They don't know if they have a house. and. I, we think they don't, right? Unfortunately, you know, they, their their house was saved. Um, you walked over there, yeah, and that was the and you said, "Oh yeah, it's the house is here, it's fine." And had I known that the night before, I know you were, you know, sleeping every trying to get a little sleep and sleeping in your boots. I would have been, Rob, please just go over there. And I might not have gone over the I, night before that night. But. I know, but there were so many people that just wanted information, and um, I get it that, that, that there's an active situation, but there was hundreds of houses that they were wondering yeah do i have a house and that's the hardest thing and i know there's people in the crooks fire area right now in prescott who are dealing with the same things uh bisbee area new mexico uh it's the hardest thing how can they do better how can they even say be like okay we're gonna i I even ask people at the roadblocks Mm -hmm. i said can you just tell me anything we, this is the they address. They don't have any information. Yeah, no. they don't have it. I get it. But it's like, where's a list of we, we know of these homes? It's, it's just, they know which ones got destroyed pretty quick, I would think. Oh, yeah. As the county was around. out there. One member of the county GIS organization with a laptop so that he would have, um, you know, with GPS connected laptop, could have driven around that neighborhood and marked every property as either, you know, it's fine. There's some damage, but the house is okay, or it's gone. Yeah. That's all they'd have to do. That's it. And they could have done that in a matter of an hour or maybe two. And the uh, the amount of anxiety people would have suffered oh, on immense. Tuesday evening and through Wednesday and, and, and even into Thursday for some people um, would have been tremendous. Yeah. So I, I think there's a lot of lessons that we can learn from this. I, I, I think it's super important that we capture those now and that, people hear and and hear them and actually implement changes based on them. I, I, ho- I hope that's the case. Uh, folks, you got a comment, love to hear from you. You can do it. Email, talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. You can also chime in anytime, 877-9713-971. Here with Rob Wilson. Um, one, we're, we're almost out of time this hour, but I, I always mention your safes out at Timberline. This isn't, uh-huh. this isn't a, a sales pitch here or anything, but okay. I, I think about, and we're both wearing the Timberline shirts today. And by the way, you're open out there. <laughs> yes, and we it's, are. Um, we have opened back up again. Tomorrow, by the way, tomorrow is um, Stop the Ladies' bleed. Day. Oh, right? Yep. Yes, Thursday. Thursday. Is- and it's Stop the Bleed. Yep. And I think about these things. You should. You, you might be on your own, like you went into that fire situation. You mm-hmm. were on your own, knowing Stop the Bleed. Um, I, I encourage people to take courses like that. Um, any kind of safety courses nowadays, because you, you well, shouldn't yeah. be reliant. We, we have these safety nets, but we should be able to rely on ourselves too. If yeah. this has taught us anything the past couple of years, really. Yeah. I was out there by myself putting out spot fires, but I had an individual first aid kit with me Yeah, and I had my cell phone and you know, there were, there was, there was a plan in place to address things that could have gone wrong. Yeah. Um, and I, I've already helped a couple of neighbors open safes that were in homes that were fully engulfed and is completely it, destroyed. There's um, stuff in there, okay. And after you have a safe go through a fire like that, obviously you can't use the combination anymore. You have to cut it open. Oh, wow. And so I've been there for two safe cuttings so really? far. And um, both of them did pretty well. There was some damage to um, some of the stuff, but... Overall, they did exactly what they were supposed to do. Okay, good. I, that's the question I have. I had for you. And let's talk about this more next hour. Plus, I want to get into, uh, oh, I guess uh, Congressman O'Halloran has a meeting. He's rolling up his sleeves doing a teletown hall. Oh, wow. Fire. He, yeah. Because wow. he couldn't make it all the way to Flagstaff? Yeah, I guess. And anyway, I want to talk about inflation as well in this uh, World Bank report. Plus, Rob's got more details. And where do we go next? Plus, insurance and rebuilding costs. Hang sure. tight. Back in just a few minutes. This is the Jeff Orovitz Show on 97.1 The Big Talker. All right, we'll continue on with Rob Wilson. Plus, uh, a one of the candidates for mayor for the city of Flagstaff dropped out. We'll give you the details. Another hour of the show starts now. All right, 
right, welcome back to another hour of the show here with Rob Wilson, owner of Timberline Firearms and Training. And uh, I'm a little off today because uh, Olivia's gone. Yeah, your technology uh, key isn't working very good today. I know, and just like she, she's usually doing those phones and stuff and just mm-hmm. keeping keep me in, on track. But she had earned time off. There you go. So, yeah, that's, that's how I don't get earned time it's, off, it's do you? It's state law. <laughs> it's like state well, law. Yeah, what, what's time off? Yeah, what, what, what is that? And you have less time off now because you're dealing with... Uh, the fire issues out there that we were talking about last hour, plus mm-hmm. running a business, plus all that other stuff. Plus, you got some trees to take down. Yep. What happens to all the trees? Like when you live adjacent to a burn area, I think people you know are wondering this all over the state, and it's like national forest or mm-hmm. BLM land or state land. And did they come in and just take out the dead burnt ones, or did they just let nature do its course? Because you got to look at that stuff if you're close to the forest. Well, what happened with the Schultz fire was they said, you know, we need to study this and we need to determine what the right answers are for this. So before we make a decision about whether we're going to allow any kind of logging or harvesting of of this wood, um, we need to do some studies. We need to think. And so it took two or three or four years to complete these studies, by which point all of that wood had become useless. Um, So all of the Schultz fire area, uh, or most of it, I think, was left to just fall and it's on the ground now and rotting away. Yeah, and it'll rot for a long time. And what a lot of people don't realize is the, there's actually, excuse me, still good wood there. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm a firewood guy. Yeah. Uh, my dad is, and unfortunately, he had 10 cords burn up in the fire. Wow. Uh, so he's got to start getting that again. That's so a lot of work. He's going around the neighbors. He's like, I'll take that tree because it's um, most of them are just scarred on the outside and blackened. Mm-hmm. But you cut it, and then eventually the bark comes off. Usually inside, it's, it's perfectly fine. Sure. Um, you can tell when it's charred all the way through. It's still usable wood, but it, let's just let it lie there and potentially be a future fire hazard because it's still... Burnable. It'll be fuel for a future. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. All right. I'd love your thoughts, folks. Send an email, talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Um, sponsor for this segment of the show is the Blind Brothers. And when you're uh, when you're looking for blind shutters or shades and you call the Blind Brothers, you're going to work directly with them in three plus decades of combined experience. And what I really like about this great Northern Arizona company is you're never going to have to work with subcontractors. You work directly uh, with the Blind Brothers and they will lay out all of your options, not just the most expensive ones that fit your style and your budget. If you call the Blind Brothers right now, mention the Jeff Overt Show, you can get half off installation in addition to any other advertised specials. Do your neighbors a favor. Call the Blind Brothers for a free estimate at 928-634-2423. That's 928-634-2423 or go to theblindbrothers.com. Let's get back to fire issues, but I want to get on a few uh, news items here, Rob. Mm -hmm. Uh, I did this release earlier on talkwithjeff.com. Current council member Regina Salas was one of the four candidates running for mayor. Did you see she... uh, She's gone. She dropped just out. withdrew yeah. Yeah, from the race as a result of a challenge that was, was uh, presented in court to her um, petition signatures, um, which we have seen happen once or twice before. Yeah. Um, all of a sudden, that's gotten a lot more attention. And it appears this time, um, both petitions that were evaluated, um, it was done by the Coconino County Democrat Committee, or at least... Um, members of their leadership. So whether it was endorsed by them or not, I don't know. Well, the person that brought the lawsuit was named John Propster. Yeah. Um, and he brought it to Coconino County Superior Court, which is what you do when you challenge signatures. You're saying, and I have not looked this up or verified this myself, you're saying he's involved with the... Yes, he's, on, okay. he's a member of the board. Of the, on the board, okay. Yeah. All right, which is, I don't think that's too uncommon. Usually they try to have some distance so they don't have someone directly on the board. They find, they go, hey, Rob, will you bring this court We need case? someone. You know, we need to, somebody not, you know, that's usually kind of you want that distance. Yeah. Just for the political, the 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 um the, the looks of it, the smell, yeah. the smell. Especially test. since this is supposed to be a nonpartisan race. Yeah, this is, isn't yeah. supposed to be Democrats, Republicans, Independents. This is supposed to be <laughs> who's best for Flagstaff. You're funny. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> I'm naive. Yeah. Well, it, it's interesting because we have 91 towns and cities in Arizona, and the only one that has true partisan elections that I'm aware of is is Tucson, where yeah. you're on a ballot. It's Democrat. Democrat, Democrat. Well, it's all Democrats that get elected, but you're listed Democrat, Republican, uh, Independent, or what's the other one? Um, Green is no longer Libertarian. Yeah. Yeah. So, but Flagstaff and cities like Cottonwood and Prescott and Sedona, they're all considered nonpartisan elections. Which is kind of funny because Tucson's the one place where it really is nonpartisan. It's Democrat. It's just Democrats. Yeah. There's (laughs) it is as nonpartisan. And and Tucson is just, wow, the politics down there are, are. 
pretty off. Um, Tempe and Flagstaff are kind of up there. Yeah. Uh, but Tucson al- almost takes the cake. So anyway, Regina Salas, uh, they went to court. She had 1,836 signatures, and the minimum was like 1,600 or something. I can't remember the 1,703 exact. or Yeah, somewhere. something like that. A high number, and the reason why it's a high number is because it's a nonpartisan election. So they mm-hmm. take the, the entire... All the Democrats have voted Republicans, Independents, Libertarians, and they say you need to get, I think it's 5%. Of the total. Of, or is it 10%, something yeah. like that, of the total. So it's more signatures for most of these, a lot of these city races now than it is for running for Congress. Yeah. Which is stupid. It, it, it is. It really is. So they need to change it. So they found that the 354 were found invalid, which honestly is not unheard of. You've done this. I've seen about 20% failure rate on these signatures. If you're running for office, you better have 25% more. Oh, yeah. Minimum. Yeah. Um, we did the entire city race one year. Um, I remember you All did the that. candidates that did it. <laughs> um, and I was surprised at how many invalid signatures get end yeah. up on petitions. And you found one that got bumped off. Yes. A, a candidate that got bumped off. Yep. Um, and later he ran for mayor and then had some legal troubles. After that, sure but anyway, did. another story. Um, so Salas withdrew her name today. Uh, here's a quote. She said, I have reason to believe that the challenge to my nomination was instigated by my opponents and their supporters who have gone out of their way to inject partisan politics in a supposedly nonpartisan civic engagement. But it's not nonpartisan. And this is it's not kind of typical play now. I, I'm not saying it's good, Rob. I mean, it's it stinks. Well. I, I, I personally think that we should validate the signatures. Yeah. It's it to me, um, for the our listeners that don't know this, when you submit your signatures, the city clerk is respi- re- required by law to just accept them. She can't, she or he cannot actually. Don't test get me going down them. that road. Yeah, <laughs> them they yeah. call it. Okay, the, yeah, yeah. Anyway, the the city clerk cannot. Um, we're just kidding. Expect or or qualify those signatures. They have to just accept them. Yeah, face value. So you could turn in petitions that said Mickey Mouse seventeen hundred times, and unless a citizen went in and looked at your petitions and filed a grievance against them, you would be on the ballot. Yeah, yeah. It takes, and that's what happened. So a this guy turned it in. It's a court case. Yep. Right. Did you go through this process? Yeah. Do you actually well, have to go and say, um, Regina Salas, uh, page twenty three, line three. Rob Wilson does not live in the city of Flagstaff. That's a big one. Everyone thinks they live in the city of Flagstaff and right. can vote. You you can't sign, Rob can't sign a, a city petition. Correct. Because you don't live in the city. Right. So they go through each one and they go to the voter registration and say, yep, Rob lives in the county, disqualified. Judge will say disqualified. That's what happened here. That's exactly Or what they're happened. not registered to vote or they're from the California. The judge doesn't do it. The judge tells the clerk then to validate the petition. Okay. And the clerk validates the petition either by verifying every signal signature or by doing a random sample of, you know, maybe 200 signatures and then applying whatever the validity rate of that 200 was yeah. to the entire total. Okay. So now there's three. Uh, Mayor Paul Deasy, um, current Mayor Paul Deasy, former council member Becky Daggett. You know her? I, I would love to get her on the program. I've sent multiple emails. You would think she'd want to be on the program. I, she I'd wants to, to represent the um, citizens of Flagstaff. Mayor Deasy is coming back on soon, and Pastor Daniel Williamson is on the ballot, and he mm-hmm. has made an appearance and wants to get back on the show, and we will get him back on the show. They face off in the August primary, top two square off in November. Yep. So there you go. All right. A little political drama there for you. <laughs> it's always political Even drama. in Flagstaff. Yeah, right. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. I want to switch to this one that I teased last hour, Rob. It's um, the This is from the BBC and has to do with the prices. Let's switch to international here. It's mm-hmm. uh, Ukraine war to cause biggest price shock in 50 years, according to the World Bank. Sure. I don't have a lot of faith in the World Bank. You know, but like if the they're who, saying things like but that, if, when they say that, that means it's bad. You better listen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it doesn't mean they're. I doubt they're going to be opposite, like wrong, where it's like prices go down by fifty percent. I guess there's always a chance things collapse and you have deflation and stuff, but not when you're printing all this money and stuff. So the 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 the, the headline here is the war in Ukraine is set to cause the largest commodity shock since the 1970s. The World Bank has warned in a new forecast that said disruption caused by the conflict would contribute to huge price rises for goods ranging from natural gas to wheat and cotton. And we saw today Putin shut off today or yesterday. He shut the valve. Uh, Poland and, and Belarus. Belarus, I believe. Yeah. Um, and the reason why he did it is because he says you will you will pay me in, in rubles. Yeah. 
Um, I assume he'll probably take gold too. Uh, yeah. And because there's all kinds of sanctions and they're trying to get away from the dollar system. He and this can't is, use dollars right now. He can't use dollars. Sanctions so, against him, so. so Poland says, oh, we're going to get gas somewhere else. And by, you know, November, there's going to be a new pipeline. It doesn't exactly help right, right. now. I don't know what the outcome is, uh, you know, since I checked it a couple hours ago. So anyway, this article goes on. The increase in prices is, start, is quote, starting to have very large in- economic and humanitarian effects. Um, Peter, Peter Nagel a co-author of the report told the BBC he said households across the world are feeling the cost of living crisis. We're particularly worried about the poorest households since they spend a larger share of income on food and energy. So they're particularly vulnerable to this price spike. The senior economist at the world bank added. Yeah. I mean, this is common sense. I mean, uh, of course, you, you yeah. Don't, you don't even need a study for this, Rob. We just shut off all of the output of Ukraine. Yeah. And the wheat, right. uh, barley, uh, then you've got you've also shut down in large parts um, to some countries the the the, o- the oil from Russia. Mm-hmm. So then you've got to try to make up for it somewhere else. And the World Bank has it right on this one because if if you're in a poor country, you are feeling the effects more than anyone else you're because really a larger gonna... percentage of your income goes towards food and housing. Yeah. Like like so much so that if it just goes up ten percent, twenty percent. Literally, people are starving, and that's what's starting to happen in the world is people are, are strapped. In America, people are, it's estimated that people are spending between five and $6,000 more per year. Mm-hmm. So what, $450 a month or so, $500 a month per year just on the inflation side now. Currently, yeah. Currently. And, and this is a nation that's strapped with debt. and They're going to save another 50% beyond that. And if you're someone who's living on a fixed income, like Social Security, um, how are you going to adapt for that? Exactly. What's going to happen to the poverty rates worldwide, but even more importantly here in the United States? Our poverty rates are going to skyrocket now. I, I think so. And the middle class is going to continue to get absolutely wiped out here. Yep. Uh, and around the world, the, you know, most, a lot of these countries don't have a middle class. Um, you know, and, and the hope of getting into the middle class is even worse. worse. What I don't like that this report didn't report on is this was already happening. Oh, yeah. This was just a, 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 the proverbial straw. This is but, just a press release to... Yeah, exactly, yeah. because they forgot to include stimulus, mm-hmm. all the money that pumped into the system, the 11... This is just the U.S., $11 trillion. Yeah. Think of all the other nations in the world. The debt, yep. uh, and now you've got rising interest rates. Mm-hmm. So more money, it's uh, for every quarter point in interest that we have, Rob, the, on the national debt equals $80 billion in additional interest payments. Do, in, do that math. In quarter interest point. payments. Yeah, just an interest. We're borrowing to pay the interest. We're yeah. like, we're like broke uh, Uncle uh, Sam we're, is we're, is shifting one credit card bill. You know, paying with the credit card with the other credit card. Oh, that, well, that's basically and, where we're until at. that credit card's maxed out, yeah, and then and getting it, another and one. You go fly and for paying, another and one, then getting another one. Yeah, yeah. That's that would what it would be if if you and I were doing the same thing. The federal government's doing. Yeah, right it's now. it's the same thing. And so and and they also um, they mentioned decreasing populations in some countries as well mm-hmm. as as issues. I mean, we always talk about the population increase, but especially in Western countries, Rob, uh, the population is actually it's it, a lot of countries are having trouble. You look at Italy and places like that. Um, with, if it had it not been for immigration. And we can get into that whole discussion. Uh, U.S. is not growing as much either. I yeah. mean, Western countries are just continuing to see those those declines. All right. Interesting side note on population. So I'll say the population of San Francisco dropped by 100,000 people between 2020 and 2021. That's it? I'd be surprised. Just 100,000? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. that's a pretty good chunk of people gone. I have one here for, uh, speaking of San Francisco, on the woke side, uh, Levi's, <laughs> it's an article from the from Breibart, Levi's Unzipped. They are such become such a woke company. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know this. It kind of stinks because I like Levi's. Yeah, um, but all kinds of woke policies there that they're they're pushing. And um, there's an article here also from Just the News. Ex CEOs of McDonald's and Best Buy corporations, they're saying that corporations should shun politics and return to to customer focus. You think? And I wonder what these CEOs were doing when they were in there. If they yeah. were ba- kowtowing to the, you know, the woke ma- mobs. C- customer and stockholder focus is what makes a business successful yeah. when they start playing in the political arena like that's Disney's just done. Uh, Netflix is being accused of that. They've seen a dump in their, yeah. their shares. Disney is a, that's a prime example. Yeah. And you know, 
pulling the the special authority that that Disney had to to govern basically um, that the state of Florida gave yeah. them so they could build. I think that was a good idea for the wrong reasons. Uh, I don't think the reasons that Governor DeSantis did it were right. But I don't think any private or a private company should have that kind of authority in the first place. They should have never had it to start with. So yeah, I'm glad it's point. gone. It's yeah. just for the wrong reason. Yeah. All right. Sponsor this segment. Uh, we got, I want to get back to some fire issues and uh, talk a little bit more. Rob's got some more details he wants to hit on. Um, and I, you know what? I apologize. I I've seen several calls come through Rob, Uh-oh. but it lo- it listed as telemarketer. And I told you I didn't have Olivia here. So for those of you who called in, I will try to grab them here if we can uh, and get situated during the break. This is what happens when Olivia goes away. I'm going to have to give her a raise. Yeah, apparently. But yeah, it came up as telemarketer, telemarketer. So I didn't want, I didn't want to grab it. 877-971-3971. If, if, if I don't pick up because it says telemarketer, just leave your comments on the Just Wireless listener line. Uh, hey, I want you to call Glenn Least at uh, WT Wealth Management. Uh, ensure your investments have staying power and a competitive edge. Uh, call Glenn today. He can give you a free consultation uh, as he did with me. And I'm a, I'm a client of um, WT Wealth Management and Glenn Least as well. There's no obligation. Give him a call right now at 928-225-2474. That's 928-225-2474. Uh, don't forget also, uh, Glenn has Intelligent Investing right here on 97.1 The Big Talker. Uh, Saturdays at noon. And coming up this Saturday, we have part two of, um, of, of Investing 101 going over kind of a lot of just the the basics that I think a lot of people just just don't know and right. terms and what does this mean? What's they, this kind of a retirement account? They shouldn't be afraid of it. The, go, go ahead and, and, and get that initial first consultation in yeah. there. Learn yeah. something and, and you'll feel more comfortable as it goes. I almost called Glenn yesterday because yesterday was not a good day in the stock market. No, it was, it was like eight, I, Today was kind points. of flat and level. I don't know how Elon's doing with his whole Twitter buy because <laughs> now they're saying the stock, his the value that he's using to base the loan that he's getting mm-hmm. to buy Twitter. Now the stock's... The Tesla stock, he's he's pledged se- Tesla stock. So and it, it took like a hundred and twelve billion dollar hit. Can wow. You think about that. How many countries don't even have uh, like most in the world yeah. for GDP? It's and, and that's it's, how big a hit he took in one day. Yeah, I mean, Tesla did him 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 personally was like ten billion. Right. I mean, which to him he's worth like a quarter trillion. So yeah. I guess it's you know tough times. Anyway, love your thoughts, folks. Send me an email. Talk with Jeff at iCloud dot com. That's talk with Jeff at iCloud dot com. All right, hang tight. Don't go anywhere. Finish up here with Rob Wilson when we come back. Rob Wilson is here with me. Uh, Rob, don't forget it's Wing Wednesday at Sportsman's Bar and Grill. That sounds this is good. The biggest news of the day here. Some good. Hot that does spicy sound wings, good, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I just got a text. Um, we got a couple texts. Uh, Rob got one from his wife. I got one from my wife. <laughs> I also got a, sent a, a comment from Mark. I want to get to here. Um, I, I apparently got to get home and get the, something in the oven. She has the self timer on, so we got to finish up. Yeah. Apparently, wrap this. We've got show, response, right? and you got a text that. Um, I was supposed to uh, admit how many times my wife called me and said, "Get home now." <laughs> this was during on the Tuesday. Ready, set, go, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, would you know? I, normally, it's just like, okay, I am getting there. I, I am guilty of not having probably responded to her first or second or maybe even third request. Yeah, yeah. All right. Anyway, Wing Wednesday at Sportsman's Bar and Grill, uh, voted best sports bar in Flagstaff many, many years in a row, and uh, I love Wing Wednesday because it's half price wings, and these things are getting some places don't even have them anymore. Right there, and there's a. There's bird a chicken thing, the bird right flu. Yeah. So there's an egg. Now we're dealing with egg spikes and egg shortages, perhaps, yep. maybe. Yep. Glad I have chickens, but I, you get concerned, like, do they get the, is this, how does this stuff travel? I don't, I don't know. I don't know how it gets transmitted. I don't though. know either. But I, I get like, I, we've got so many. Do you need some eggs? <laughs> I've got so many eggs. It's like once they get producing, yeah. it's it's just amazing. And you just, you can't keep up. And we, we have six chickens. And there's about five or six eggs a day. 
Mm-hmm. I don't know how to do so many. So think about that. Who the heck can you eat five, six eggs a day? So before uh, you're out of here, I think I got a dozen sitting All there right. for you. So I don't know if you need them. That's my payment for today, huh? <laughs> yeah, this is, these are these are cage Talk free, show man. For a dozen eggs, cage man. free. They're worth like hundred and eighty three dollars at I least. Bet. Yeah. Uh, anyway, go to Sportsman's Bar and Grill. Take advantage of Wing Wednesday today. Uh, half price wings uh, again up by the uh, hospital and Basha Shopping Center. Uh, Mark sent a comment. Mm-hmm. Um, he says that he knows two houses that had gun safes uh, in the fire area. Mm-hmm. I, I assume, I'm assuming the, the, the tunnel fire area. S- he says, supposedly both are fire resistant, fireproof, and both just turned into an oven and basically everything inside was destroyed. Mm-hmm. What is the, prote- so I, I get a gun safe or a, okay, let me go to the bottom end here. You got those ones that are those little lock boxes that you drop on the side and they break open. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Like the Walmart special? Sure. Yeah. Is that just incinerated? Uh, yeah, that's kind of okay. not a very good investment. Um, okay. And there's there are things that are called gun safes that are actually designed not to um, protect it from fire, but to protect it from, you know, people that shouldn't have access to it. Like lock it away for so, the kids and things like that. Right, okay. right. And, and those are lock boxes. Those are steel boxes that keep something, you know, isolated from somebody that shouldn't have access to it with some type of a lock. I, I know Mark here, and he's probably talking about what was sold and is a traditional gun safe, though. Right. Probably not a, lock bo- a and, locker. And safes, start, they have fire ratings that okay. start at 30 minutes and go up to two and a half hours. So that fire rating is, and it's there is no national standard for it, so each safe company is a little bit different. Um, but the bottom line is you get what you pay for. And the safes that I cut open this last week um, were both rated, well, one was rated at 75, the other was rated at 90 minutes. Um, both of them did suffer some damage inside. There was some um, charring on, on the wood stocks of a couple of guns. Okay. Um, that particular safe also had ammunition stored in it, which is not a good plan. It, it oh. cooked off. So, oh, they, see, I would have just thrown it. I, I put it in there. Yeah. Don't. So put, you're okay. Don't so, put ammunition in the safe with a firearm. Okay. Because of the fire danger. Yeah. Because if it gets hot enough. Well, what happened? Uh, just, all of them rent, went off. Um, they don't become oh. propulsive because they're not in a, in a barrel. There's nothing to contain the pressure behind the bullet and propel it. Oh, so it won't just like um, it doesn't shoot through the side of the safe or anything. Oh, okay. It just blows up and kind of bounces around a little bit inside. I have never. I didn't know that. Yeah. I just learned something new. So if you and I do not recommend this. I'm not saying to do this, but if you threw a a, 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 a 22 round in in a fire, uh huh, what happens? Same thing. It, it just but don't do that because it could. Something weird it, could happen. It, it's not safe to. It's do It's not that. safe to do that. But, but um, so you're saying it because the barrel it's forcing that out. Yeah, because the bullet okay. doesn't reach velocities that are traditional for coming out of a gun. Should I have known and that? Therefore, it's not going. I feel like I should have known that, but I learned something new today. So yeah. thank you, Rob. Okay, so, so don't store your. So what do you? No, back up. What do you do? Um, so you've got a gun safe, and so you got your guns, and mm-hmm. maybe your your. You know, Rob's got his, you know, all his gold bars and, you know, yeah. to fuel up the jet and his Elon Musk, uh, the, the, the Tesla stocks, sure. things like that. Yep, and all uh, that stuff. His Bitcoin. <laughs> so you've got all that in there with your guns. So you do I have to have another safe? Well, for your Are you trying to sell me a safe here, no, Rob? I, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I've got photographs of what that ammunition looked like yeah. after it blew up in there, and it, and it added a lot of additional heat inside the safe. Fortunately, still most of his firearms were in in pretty good shape. Okay, some of the um, some of the Glocks melted is the bottom line, but most of the rest <laughs> were salvageable, and, and that was important because some of them were his grandfather's guns, yeah. things like that. Yeah, family um, heirlooms here. Bottom line is make sure you're buying a quality safe. Make sure that it's got a seal that's going to really seal the door um, when it gets hot, because that's how heat gets into it um, really quick. And make sure that the fire rating, I, I, you know, I would say no less than 75 minutes. Okay. Because. If it's um, in a house, yeah. How yeah. long does it take it to burn? And can I, th- this house was burned. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I feel bad. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that's hard. At least he got saved the family heirlooms and had that. Yeah. You know, protect, because you're never going to replace that. The other safe that got uh, opened um, actually had gold in it. Oh, wow. And Did he give you some? Th- no. No. Uh, <laughs> but the gold survived just fine. Yeah. The paper money did not. Really? Yeah. Gone. See, paper money is worthless. It, it, you know. Proved it there, huh? Well, what would happen if it burnt and you have gold in there? Gold doesn't go away. Wouldn't no. that be salvageable even if it did turn into a pool of 
yeah, gold it, it or something. You, I mean, you'd you probably still be able to maybe, recover it somehow. Unless it just melted with all the um, the safe. There's a safe melt though. I mean, that that have to no. Be the really exterior hot. doesn't melt. Yeah, I mean that that would have to be uh, it, it warps, nuclear reactor. It, you know, the the dial was gone from one. The electronic combination thing was gone from the other. So we had to cut them open. But okay, I hope you all learned something because I certainly did. I didn't. I didn't know that. So thank thanks for that, Rob. And you have safes, by the way. I, I'm just going to plug Timberline because yeah. you, you do have them. We do sell Liberty safes, yeah. which are some of they the are some of the best U.S. made here and right in Payson, Utah is where they're all made. So Payson, Utah. Yeah, is it Payson, Utah? There is. We've yeah. been there to pick up safes. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. And then Payson doesn't pay, uh, no Prescott. They have a Ruger. Yeah, um, one that, of Ruger's largest manufacturing facilities down in is down in, right by the airport in Prescott. Good, yeah. good, good. Okay, what are the lessons learned here? I know you've got a couple things you want to hit on here yep. to, to wrap up the fire issues. So we're really, really fortunate our house didn't burn. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of the reason that it didn't is because we put some thought into building it. We used, um, you know, the concrete non-flammable siding. Like the hardy plank type mm-hmm. stuff, yeah. I didn't want to... Not any particular manufacturer, but yeah, that kind but of stuff. But it's like a masonry type it material. It is. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like you had mentioned earlier, our gutters actually caught on fire and flamed, scorched the side of our house, but it didn't catch on fire because it was concrete. Um, the other thing we did is we don't have a ventilated attic. We have spray foam insulation. Uh, and, you know, your normal attic ventilation system is designed to suck air in from the soffits and exhaust it out, either the peak or the the end vents. That happens in a forest fire too, except now it's sucking in burning embers that land on a piece of a truss, God. light your house on fire from the inside. It's a hot actor already, yeah. And it's sucking air into it as it's burning. So furnace. And Bob Thorpe talked about that last week about systems that maybe close themselves Yeah, uh, in, in the event of that. Okay. So those are important things. Having that defensible space around your house, obviously. And then if your house does burn... Um, one thing I know, I've talked to two people already that live very close to me, both of them, when they bought their homes within the last eight or 10 years, insured their homes when they bought them. You know, you call your insurance it's agent, is, say, Hey, yeah. I just bought this house. I want to get insurance on it. Okay, here you go. What they hadn't done is check to see what is their coverage now. And in both cases, their coverage had not changed since they bought that house eight, 10, 12 years ago. They're getting about half the value of today's market on their house and it's not near enough to replace their house. So I would strongly encourage everybody out there take, and I know it's going to take you a couple of minutes to get logged into your insurance company and get, pull up your policy. A couple hours. But yeah, it could be, um, <laughs> but it's you, worth it. If you got an agent, call them and have yeah. them send you a copy of your, of your policy, but verify that it matches what today's numbers are because, you know, construction here in Flagstaff probably starts at 300 bucks a square foot. I know when I hear that, I'm just like, it's, that's just an insane number. Mark Howitt mentioned the other day, 400 uh, for a lot of these higher end homes yeah, and just, easy. it's expensive now. So you just do the math on that. Let's, let's go with 300 hundred dollars a square foot for the rebuild mm-hmm. two thousand square foot home six hundred thousand dollars and, and that's to, just to, the home to build that thing that 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 hasn't furnished it that hasn't building. put in your i don't know how anyone's building anything right now yeah yeah, yeah then then all the person but don't you have what's called uh, replacement cost but but it's capped out if you don't adjust your limits yep. i guess okay. it's usually a percentage of what uh, the check your by. policies people hey, angela if you're listening uh, check check our policy <laughs> because you know i i don't do that uh what else you got um Making sure you document what's in your home. Yeah. Um, and don't wait until, like I did on Tuesday, when I was running around my house with my uh, cell phone video camera on, videoing everything in my house so that if it went away, because I fully expected when I drove away that it was going to be gone. I got to tell you, I'm I'm when I drove by your house Wednesday morning, I was so happy to see you there. And, and when I talked to you, because I, I knew what my dad was dealing with, and he's in a little more opening than you are, I thought for sure um, you were gone. And you, unfortunately, some, you know, real close to you. Yeah. Multiple homes. Did, ne- next door burn. Um, yeah. But make sure you document your, uh, everything in your home. Take your take your cell phone, put it on video, walk around every room, open every closet, open every cupboard, open every drawer. Take, you know, five seconds of video and then send that video to someplace other than your house. <laughs> um, so you've got a copy yeah. of it. because uh, Flash drive, uh, yeah. cloud. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. those are things that you could do that would make a big difference. The other thing I want to talk about quickly is I think there needs to be a really thorough investigation into what happened here. Um, not to try to, to hang anybody for any decisions that were made, but to understand why those decisions were made and to make sure events like this don't happen again. Yeah. I think the fire is behaving differently than what we're accustomed to in years past. I think the National Forest Service needs to dramatically change its firefighting strategies and tactics. 
Um, and because I have some questions, and I know a lot of my neighbors have questions about whether the Forest Service can investigate themselves, yeah. um, we need to have a couple of local members of our community on the investigation team that looks at this fire. Yeah, get the locals. Do you, you have an email? I do. I've yeah, got an email. Let's mention that real quick. This is you, something you set up. It is. To try to get more info from people that, that know stuff. Because I really want to get a good lessons learned out of this and make sure they get instituted. Info at tunnelfire.us. If you have firsthand information about something that you think maybe did or didn't work right, um, and it could be anything from you know planning way in advance through the fire period and afterwards, um, if you have photographs of specific things that occurred, if um, you know someone that was maybe involved in um, responding and, and that kind of stuff, um, I'd appreciate any of that kind okay. of information. I assure you that it's going to be confidential. Okay. Info at tunnelfire.us info at tunnelfire.us i'll put it in the podcast show notes which will go up here momentarily excellent and um i i think you'll hear from some people and i know more and more people are coming out and saying hey what about this and it all needs to be looked into it does fairly yeah fairly. all right rob uh, great advice on a lot of things today and i hope people will heed that i hope i will i've got a lot of that that i have to follow i mean it's we all get sucked up in our lives. Take the time and do it. And and, and uh, I appreciate it, Rob. We'll talk with you soon. Back tomorrow, folks. I hope you have a great, safe night. See you soon. Take care.